So my name is Aylin Öneytan. I'm a food writer, uh, originally an architect, then turned into a food writer. And I'm doing also researches on various aspects of food. So today's talk will be on bulgur, usually just uh, described as cracked wheat and the versatility of bulgur in Turkish cuisine. So our story starts, of course, with the wheat. Uh, bulgur is a wheat product. So many people think it as a grain, it's a separate grain, but uh, actually it is wheat. And of course the wheat, uh, uh, with the uh, f first domestication of wheat, the food culture changed forever. Uh, then comes the uh, bread and uh, other wheat products, but I, I can easily argue that maybe the, uh, the first uh, product of wheat was actually bulgur. So if we go back to the uh, start of the wheat, uh, in Göbekli Tepe, uh, they have found uh, the first uh, examples of the domesticated wheat grains uh, dating back to 11,000 years. So uh, it is the um, start of the, uh, in a way, the uh, today's uh, food culture. Uh, so uh, Upper Mesopotamia, the Fertile Crescent, and uh, the uh, uh, Southeast Turkey is uh, where the wheat cultivation has started. Uh, uh, two years ago, we have toured all the uh, south southeastern Turkey and uh, our guide, uh, who was from the Ministry of Culture, because we were doing a project on southern eastern Turkey, said that in some areas, especially close to Diyarbakir, you can still find some ancient gr uh, wheat grains, uh, uh, ancient wheat varieties, uh, still uh, popping up here and there, uh, uh, just growing wild. Uh, and uh, he was saying that, for example, last year it was here, the other year it was there, so it goes with the wind, and you can st still see some ancient wheat varieties like triticum monococcum, triticum dicoccum, these kinds of uh, varieties still growing wild uh, in the southeast, especially around Halanchemi uh, and uh, this area. Um, so, uh, and nowadays, uh, all the excavations, uh, are also conducting uh, analysis of food. They are not only, uh, uh, thankfully, not uh, uh, looking for artifacts and monuments, but they are also doing ex um, analysis on food and they are finding uh, ancient uh, grains uh, in most of the uh, Neolithic excavations. So, uh, as uh, wheat is such an important uh, food product, it was all the uh, gods and goddesses were depicted in the Anatolian culture with uh, wheat stalks. So maybe if you have been into my former uh, talks, uh, we, I did a one on also wheat berries, the use of wheat berries, which was quite similar. Uh, I used the slide. So for example, this is uh, on the right hand side, uh, it's a neo um, uh, depiction of uh, the fertility, uh, uh, the, 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 the god of plant, the Kubaba, and uh, of course Demeter and all, uh, you know, uh, fertility uh, and the planty goddesses are always depicted with uh, wheat stalk in hand. And this coin is from uh, uh, Afyon, uh, uh, Sinada. Uh, uh, it's interesting, it is opium poppy and wheat. So these were the two very important uh, products. And many people think of the opium poppy as a uh, um, um, drug, but it was a, an oil source. Uh, and it still is. Poppy oil was used in cuisine and in lighting and in various other Thanks. So these were the very important crops of uh, Anatolia, Central Anatolia, Southeast Anatolia. And of course to turn wheat into uh, flour or to make bread, you need to grind. So it is more advanced technology in that sense. So I can easily argue that maybe the wheat was first uh, turned into bulgur. Uh, so the, uh, the existence of bulgur can be even before bread, 
we don't know that, of course, but you know, it can uh, it can be investigated, or maybe in further archaeological uh, findings will tell us. So the wheat is first boiled, and then uh, it's uh, uh, it is uh, it uh, soaks up all the cooking juices, and then it is spread, and then it is dried. So it is maybe in that sense one of the first food products of civilization, because the wheat is transformed into a parboiled, pre-cooked uh, food product, which cannot germinate and which cannot really easily rot, because uh, it, is, uh, it, it can be kept uh, for long uh, better. Because otherwise, the, uh, the wheat berry, uncooked, in uncooked form, can easily uh, germinate again or rot and uh, so that is the, the, uh, the logic behind uh, creating yogurt must have been to preserve it for longer. And of course, uh, this makes also bulgur very, uh, a, a very uh, healthy. Uh, so this is uh, how it is uh, uh, and turned into this. Um, so these pictures are from the city of Gaza, they're very old pictures. Uh, so, making bulgur was also a festive uh, occasion in um, Gaziantep. The bulgur, the wheat berries were communally um, uh, boiled in huge uh, uh, cauldrons uh, and then uh, f uh, uh, laid flat uh, to dry under the sun. Uh, so this was uh, in the outskirts of the city of Gaziantep. Uh, and in the former s slide, uh, uh, I'll come to that. But there are so many other, uh, so, so many varieties of bulgur uh, in uh, uh, coarse, uh, uh, finely, finely ground or coarsely ground uh, things like that. So, uh, in Turkish cuisine, bulgur is. If you have been to my yogurt presentation, this I borrowed from the yogurt presentation. Um, bulgur is always associated also with uh, or uh, uh, paired with yogurt. Uh, so this is another uh, slide from the, my yogurt presentation. This is the oldest man, supposedly. I mean, I don't know if it's correct, but Zaro A, uh, who is said to be uh, to have lived uh, 160 years which I think is a little bit exaggerated. But uh, when asked uh, what uh, he ate, uh, he was saying always that I'm, uh, I have a diet of yogurt and bulgur. Uh, now we have to uh, think about also the health properties of uh, uh, bulgur, because uh, as uh, the wheat is boiled and then it uh, get, uh, uh, absorbs all the cooking juices, Everything, nothing is wasted. So, uh, but the uh, proteins and the enzymes are more e easily digested by the uh, by the human body. Uh, so it is uh, even um, uh, how do you say? Uh, it, it can be digested more easily, and uh, it is more beneficial uh, to the uh, to the body. Uh, a couple of years ago, in the Oxford Food Symposium, there was a keynote speaker who argued that the cooking made uh, the mankind uh, develop and to have all the uh, nutrients better, so that uh, you know so that changed the civilization when compared to raw food. So uh, this is uh, well an example. Uh, his favorite food was yogurt and uh, bulgur and he survived uh, 13 wives. Uh, so, when coming back to bulgur, we have so many varieties. Again, uh, it can be uh, coarsely uh, ground or finely ground, but then uh, in Turkey there's uh, usually pilavlık or köftelik. So köftelik is the, uh, to make köfte, the uh, bulgur patties, I would uh, say, uh, not the meatballs, but, uh, or the pilav, the, uh, to make the pilav. But it's beyond that. Usually uh, when you go to uh, 
the uh, 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 in the bazaar, you see so many varieties. You can count at least um, maybe eight, nine varieties. I have once counted, I think, nine varieties in. Um, it, in Kadıköy market, there is a shop called Mısır Çarşısı, and it was amazing. Uh, so, uh, and people, uh, funnily, uh, identify either with the uh, grinding, uh, how do you say, coarse or fine, but also according to the city. So, for example, you see from Uşak or from Malatya, or it could be from Antep, and uh, so uh, Urfa, Antep. It, it's people really uh, like to buy their bulgur according to the origin also. Now there's also the uh, new varieties called, for example, Sies, which is the ancient wheat variety, Triticum monococcum, uh, or uh, the, uh, the contemporary ones are made from durum wheat. So uh, according to the dish uh, one uh, uh, needs to prepare, you can have so uh, possibilities. Of course, this is the iconic dish, bulgur pilavı, which we find almost everywhere. And here we have to say that this is the most humble, maybe, dish of the Turkish cuisine. Uh, normally, Turkish cuisine, the high cuisine or the palace cuisine, is associated with rice. You have the rice pilav, but for the masses, uh, you have to have bulgur. Uh, in, uh, it's interesting that in the court cuisine, in the palace, um, uh, bulgur was not bought, so it was always rice, because rice was more um, precious, uh, white, more refined. So uh, in the Ottoman, in the registrars of the Topku Palace, you don't see bulgur both. Uh, it's interesting. So it's always associated with the humbleness, simplicity, and the uh, you know uh, the common uh, peasant cuisine. But of course, you can have it uh, also elaborate. For example, this is from Gaziantep. This is Kapomalı Firik pilavı. Firik is uh, another variety. It is uh, the well. Uh, uh, it is in a way like bulgur, but the cooking method is a little bit different because it is also uh, it is smoked in the uh, in the uh, field uh, so this uh, has its roots also in the um, uh, times of war or uh, famine or if there is an attack uh, or a threat of a um, army coming or something sometimes you have to ha harvest your crop early but uh, when you harvest the wheat you cannot get the husk easily off because it doesn't rub, uh, it, it cannot uh, crumble. So you have to smoke it so to get the outer skin uh, get off easily. And it gives a, a very smoky aroma to the weed, uh, which can be um, maybe, uh, 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 which is similar to Lapsang Suchong in the tea world or the, the smoky scotch, uh, whiskies uh, like uh, uh, Lagavulin or something. Uh, so uh, it is uh, very smoky. So this is a very elaborate dish. Uh, kapomalı. Kapomalı means is covered. Covered with meat. So uh, it is almost uh, equivalent to the maybe palace cuisine of the, uh, of the, of the top kapı. But this is a Gaziantep version made with firik. This is the, with desert truffles, uh, kemeli uh, bulgur pilavı. So it is, uh, it's, it's a terfezi buderi is uh, the scientific name for uh, this desert truffles. And it's an urban myth that they taste like truffles. They taste like ordinary uh, mantar, mushroom. So it's, uh, but you know, cooked this way, it is really something. So it can be a uh, very humble dish. We are, we are going to have a similar one, Mücedere, uh, today. Uh, but this is Mercimek Bulgur Pilavı, which is lentils and uh, bulgur. Uh, I think this, this is the ultimate health uh, dish uh, to me, because it has the pulse, the Mercimek. Again, a native, uh, native uh, Anatolian uh, legume uh, and uh, bulgur. So it is uh, what, uh, of course, in the old times you wouldn't use uh, tomatoes or peppers because they were non-existent. 
this uh, later uh, addition to Turkish cuisine as late as 19th century uh, because they are new world crops. Uh, but lentils have been in the cuisine uh, since ages. For example, they have done an, um, an analysis again uh, to the, uh, with the uh, remains of the um, uh, um, uh, findings in the uh, cauldrons uh, in Gordion, uh, which is believed to be, but this is uh, speculated uh, by the archaeologists, uh, from the Feast of King Midas, uh, the funeral feast of uh, King Midas. And uh, what they found is a lentil stew. The funeral feast was uh, on lentil stew. So uh, lentils were also a great part of uh, Anatolian cuisine, and they go very well with bulgur. So bulgur can be used in soups. Bulgur çorbası is one of the uh, most humble dishes, I think, in Anatolian cuisine. Or uh, a day-old uh, uh, bulgur pilavı is also uh, p uh, is converted to uh, uh, soups the next day in most of the uh, esnaf locantas or eateries. Uh, this is uh, one way to make use of bulgur again. Or it can be also with yogurt, again in soup. Or it can be disguised in dolmas. Uh, when we come to dolmas, Istanbul-style dolmas are usually with rice. But in the southeast, uh, bulgur is uh, in most cases re replaced. For example, this pasta sarma uh, from uh, Gaziantep cuisine is again with stuffed uh, with uh, uh, bulgur. Uh, this is this picture is from my book on Gaziantep cuisine, uh, A Taste of Sun and Fire, and I'll be uh, uh, showing more pictures on that. So uh, we said pilav, it can be with chickpeas, with lentils, but then uh, as, uh, the, uh, as bulgur is a pre-cooked product, it can easily be turned into salads. Kısır is the most uh, uh, maybe common or popular uh, version, or it can be uh, made into um, uh, I, would, I, I don't want to use the word meatball, but köfte, uh, maybe with lentils or um, uh, to, uh, to, to patties, uh, maybe. We translated it as meatballs and bulgur balls in this Gaziantep book. So you see that you know it can be used uh, with meat or without meat in uh, so many forms, uh, Malatya cuisine and Gaziantep cuisine is maybe the uh, the uh, most creative cuisine. So also Adana, Tarsus, and uh, Urfa uh, that make use of these. So chikifte, the raw meatballs, you add also bulgur. Uh, so it soaks up all the juices of the meat and the, uh, the other uh, herbs and uh, onion. Uh, and this is the... Um, uh, uh, the amazing uh, the, uh, uh, versatility of bulgur, I think. You, as it is a pre-cooked product, you can uh, make it to uh, like a play-doh and uh, you can form it in uh, many forms. So, for example, this is a usual uh, form that you uh, make when you start to make ishli köfte or something. And then you can easily shape it and then fill it with uh, so many ingredients. So this is how ichli köfte is made in Gaziantep, but you can have it also. And uh, of course, in Malatya, they also boil it. In Adana, they boil it. And uh, you can have various forms. You can have it fried. And if there is a little bit left over, you can steam them uh, without filling. So this is on the center. It is. Süzek uh, yapması. So you steam it on uh, on a uh, sieve, uh, the the leftover part, and uh, it is like an in between snack. Uh, for example, this is uh, they have it also in Lebanon and in Syria. This is kebab It is uh, layered, uh, so it's cut like uh, baklava. So the filling is in between, but you have the uh, bulgur layers. 
So this gives a really creative way that we can learn also for, and these are of course the Felak Köftesi or Kürt Köftesi or Arab Köftesi, uh, we have uh, so many names for it, so bulgur bowls. You can have it with uh, on uh, cooked peppers and tomatoes or Altı Cacık, we are going to taste this uh, day with the yogurt one, uh, so with yogurt. And, or you can put it in uh, soups like this. This is one recipe I truly hated when I was writing the book of Gaziantep because it was so long and so, um, how do you say, hard to write. It is, the bulgur bowls are made, small, but also you, also the, you make the stuffed ones and then you cook it with meat and uh, you cook the meat and then add the stuffed ones and the unstuffed ones to the same dish. So uh, it's a pain to make, it's delicious, I agree, but you know, I hated it when writing it. Uh, so Is this the same as Anala Kızlı? Anala Kızlı, yes, the same. Oh, it's and, the same? Yeah, well, it's the same. There are other uh, names for it. In oh. Malatya, I think they say Anala Kızlı. Uh, Adana. Adana, Adana uh, yes. Uh, ex actually, they say Eşkili. Not actually, but uh, and if it's with akıtmalı, akıtmalı means that the stuffed ones are also in. So it's quite complicated. And uh, of course, this is tarhana, but we can still uh, we can say that in a way it is like bulgur because uh, when making tarhana, people uh, mostly think of tarhana as the other tarhana, the one with the tomatoes and peppers, and it is made like making it. Sourdough, you make the, um, the uh, 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 paste, uh, and then you ferment it for several days, and then dry it and um, uh, crumble it. But the uh, the the very first tarhana, for example, this is the, again a tarhana from Antep, is uh, the wheat is boiled, and then uh, again soaking up its juices, but not dried, but mixed with yogurt and then dried. So we can say that as a concept, it is exactly like uh, bulgur, but dried together with yogurt. So it is, uh, uh, we, we can say that even the old side, Malatya or uh, Antep Tarhana is uh, in a way uh, a dried yogurt version, uh, and we can cook it the same way. So uh, let's uh, come back to Kısır again, the, uh, um, the, the ubiquitous um, uh, uh, bulgur uh, salad. Uh, now the, our chefs are taking new uh, twists on that. Uh, and uh, I remember Refika wrote uh, about this, where she, where she fell in love with this uh, Vishneri Kısır Jivan er, uh, has created. Uh, so uh, it is really very tasty and it gets a striking, uh, uh, shocking uh, pink color from uh, sour cherry juice. Uh, and then uh, such trends have become so interesting that, for example, this is from a TV show. Um, it is um, uh, with um, uh, beetroot uh, and it's very tasty. So this is uh, last year, uh, earlier this year, there was a bulgur festival in Gaziantep, and this was the uh, menu all created by uh, bulgur dishes. So the, uh, there was sourdough bread with uh, bulgur, uh, whole bulgur uh, places, and a beetroot uh, jajak with bulgur. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the uh, photographs. So everything was created with yogurt in a uh, totally uh, new way. But of course, it gets ins its inspiration from this uh, versatile use of bulgur in uh, Turkish cuisine. So uh, these were the starters, and uh, the one the, the one with prawns is inspired also from uh, Italian cuisine, like uh, with the squid ink they make a risotto. So this was like a bulgur risotto with uh, squid, squid, ink, uh, squid ink. And this was the main dish, and uh, it was a like a giant burger. Uh, it was inspired from the felak köfte or Arab köfte. See, the it was made uh, uh, like a burger disc, uh, the bulgur beneath, and uh, uh, it, the, the uh, cooked meat was on top. 
uh, again with a yogurt and uh, turmeric dressing. And uh, this was uh, the main dish. So Firik, Firik, uh, I, I forgot to say, uh, uh, to mention, Firik means uh, unripe or green in uh, Arabic language. So Firik is uh, like uh, the, as it is, uh, the wheat is called, uh, collected in the harvested, uh, still unripe. Uh, it is. Uh, it, it means green in the meaning that is unripe. So it's like hum in Turkish. Uh, so this is inspired by the greenness in that way of uh, 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 wheat uh, turning it into uh, real uh, green with um, uh, fresh or spring onions. So this was the bread. And of course, uh, in, uh, uh, it's not used much uh, except your book, uh, but it, is, it can be used also in sweets. Uh, today, uh, the chefs have uh, tried the bulgur uh, helva uh, instead of uh, using irmik, uh, using fine uh, bulgur. Uh, in uh, Indian cuisine, uh, bulgur is known as dalia or dalia, and it is uh, eaten uh, as a cereal cooked with milk and sugar. Uh, so there is the savory dalia or uh, the sweet dalia. But if we uh, look at also the uh, in other cuisines, because uh, bulgur is of course uh, not only used in Turkish cuisine, but of course Syrian cuisine, Iraq, and all Middle Eastern cuisines, uh, and uh, with all populations in uh, Turkey, uh, Armenian, Kurdish, uh, uh, and in Iran, it is also in part, some parts used. Though Iran is more uh, more uh, um, rice culture, but it goes all uh, to northern India, where uh, bulgur is known as dalia. So in uh, Indian cuisine, it's more sweet. So this was a, there, there was a bulgur crumble, a bulgur ice cream, uh, and a caramelized puff bulgur, which was amazing. Uh, all served uh, with uh, again chogan foam, foam, which is the gypsophilia foam uh, used in uh, uh, kerebic, uh, uh, which I think is a very uh, sweet version of ichli um, köfte. So it was inspired from that. And there was also with uh, CS uh, bulgur biscuits. Uh, served as cookies. So this was uh, how, uh, from the versatile cook in Anatolian uh, kitchen, the use of bulgur, it can be also a, a, a very inspiring for uh, tomorrow's chefs, in a way, uh, to learn uh, this uh, ver various possibilities of bulgur, and it can be used in the most imaginative form. Yeah, thank you.